Hello. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. I am so glad that you joined us for worship today. I am Pastor Joanna Mitchell. Today is the fifth Sunday in Easter. We also want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and we give thanks for mothers and mother figures in our lives. We also pray for those people who are missing their mothers and those who long to be mothers. Please know that you are held in prayer today. We invite you to worship with us each weekend from the comfort of your own living room where you can worship God, hear God's word, and be held in prayer. Each morning at 10.30 a.m., we invite you to join us for a time of connection via Zoom. There is a link on our website. This is a wonderful time to see each other, enjoy a cup of coffee, in conversation, and also a time of prayer. We have daily devotions that Grace is putting together that are posted on our website. If you click on the slider at the top of the page labeled Devotions, you will be led to all of the ones that have been put together and today's um, devotion put together for you. Starting this Thursday at 10 a.m., we are starting something new. There will be a Zoom Bible study. I'll be leading this study, so all you need to do is bring your Bible um, or your Bible app, and we will come together, explore the lesson for the upcoming Sunday, and have conversation and discussions. I hope that you will join us. There will be a Zoom link on our website soon. Our annual meeting will be held on May 31st. It is an unusual time since we are not actually gathering together in person. Our annual meeting will be held over Zoom, and our vision board is currently in the process of figuring out how to best lay this out with the upcoming voting that needs to take place. The meeting will be held at 9 a.m., and there will be more information to come in the upcoming weeks. Last weekend, Jonathan Orwig celebrated 30 years of music ministry. We give thanks for Jonathan, his musical gifts, his leadership, and for all the ways he has served churches throughout the years, allowing people to experience God's presence through music. Jonathan has also been the one putting together our virtual worship, and I am so thankful for his work and his knowledge. I hope you join me in giving thanks for Jonathan today. We have also have an update about our partnership in Rakai. We have heard from Ann Hill and Richard at ACT, and the global pandemic is now impacting the Rakai area or region in Africa. Markets are closed, people are restricted to their homes, and hunger is becoming extreme throughout the region. ACT is organizing care boxes for families in need, consisting of rice, beans, maize, flour, and enough food to feed a family of eight for a month. The cost of each care box is $75. If you are able to support this effort to fight hunger in Rakai, feel free to contact a member of the Grace for Rakai ministry team or Debbie Jorgens here at Grace. Thank you for keeping the vulnerable women and children over in Rakai in your prayers. We also want you to know that many people have responded already and have made generous donations, and so thank you if you have already done this. We are indeed grateful. In Grace, at a glance this week, you were invited to fill out a survey about our 2019 benevolences. I hope you will take some time to vote for where you would like to see us allocate the money that Grace Lutheran will give away in order to support our community and people throughout the world. There is a nice write-up of the current needs of our partner organizations, especially in the face of the pandemic. This survey will be available up until, I believe, next Sunday, so I hope that you will vote for those organizations you want to see us support. Those are my morning announcements for today. We begin our worship in the name of the triune God. Amen. We enter a virtual gathering space once again this season. We worship together in spirit and in truth, though not in person. We pray, sing, and listen to God's word despite the fear that pervades our community. We trust Christ's peace, a peace given freely despite our doubts and fears. We know the Holy Spirit is among us, blowing with a hopeful wind of change. We feel the presence of Christ, the one who died and rose again, and brings us eternal life. We trust in God, 
is leading in this time of transformation. We experience the joy of Easter morning when we celebrate all God has in store for us. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. in Christ. You prepare your place for us in the home of God, the parent of us all. Draw us more deeply into yourself through scripture read, song sung, and word proclaimed, so that when our hearts are troubled, we will know you more completely as the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Hello, boys and girls. I hope you're doing well. I hope that your family is staying safe and healthy and strong. And I hope that this past week when we've had such beautiful weather that you've been able to get outside. I've gone for a few walks and I have found that the sunshine and the fresh air feels so good. And I love this time of year because everything is new. And I've noticed how green the grass is getting and the trees are all leafing out. And even the lilacs are budding, and they smell so good. 
And in the park behind our house, we have a marsh. And the other day, I noticed a mother duck and about five little ducklings swimming. Well, I want to talk about taking a walk because um, I'm going to tell you a story that happened oh, a couple of years ago now when I was walking in that park behind my house, and then I went a little further, and um, I usually take the same way when I walk, every day, the same path. And for whatever reason this day, I thought, you know, I'm going to try a new road, a new path. Well, I got to my normal place where I turn off, and instead of going left, I turned right. And I'm walking along, and I saw some different houses and some new scenery and things that I had never noticed before because I didn't go that way. And I'm walking and walking, and pretty soon I come to another fork in the path where I could go right or I could go left. And this time I chose to go left. And I followed that path, and now there aren't any houses around, and I walked and walked and pretty soon, I started getting a little worried because I didn't know where I was. It was getting a little bit dark. And I thought, I hope I can find my way back home again. Well, pretty soon, I finally came to a road where cars were going by. And I looked around, and I did not recognize where I was. But... I had my cell phone with me, luckily, and I was able to push on the map button, and it showed me exactly where I was. Just like right now, it shows exactly that I'm at Grace Lutheran Church in Andover. And so I just enlarged the map a little bit, and then I could see the road that would lead me home. Well, today, in just a few minutes, you're going to hear a reading from the Gospel of John. And Jesus tells the disciples that he has to leave them, but not to worry because he's going to come back and he'll take them to his father's house where there's room for everyone. And then Jesus says, you know the way. And Thomas says, we don't know the way. You know, he was probably thinking, we need a map. They didn't have maps or cell phones back in those days. But Jesus says, I am the way. Jesus was telling the disciples that he is the way. He is like a map in our life. When we're feeling scared or lonely or lost, we can look to Jesus, and he will help us. When we're not sure what to say or do, we can look to Jesus' example and follow him. Should we be kind? Yes, Jesus was kind. Should we help other people? Of course, Jesus was always helping other people. Should we pray for others? Yes, Jesus prayed for others too. Sometimes we need to ask others for help, and that's a good thing because we all need to help each other follow the way and remember how to love as Jesus loved. Let's pray. I'll pause so that you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for being the way and for showing us how much you love us. Help us to love each other and to remember that you are always with us. Amen. Thanks for listening. The first reading for today is recorded in the book of Psalms, Chapter 31, verses 1 through 5, and 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, 
a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver, from, deliver me from the hand of my enemies and prosecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The Gospel lesson for today is recorded in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works." Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace. From God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. So begins this beautiful and comforting text that we hear so often when families and friends gather together to grieve the death of a loved one. We read the scripture passage at my mother's funeral 30 years ago. She was way too young to die, and I was way too young to lose her. But death came anyway. My mom had always been optimistic, but she was also a realist. So when it became apparent that she probably only had a matter of months to live, she faced the reality head on. There were conversations between my mom and my older siblings that I was in invited to be a part of, but I just couldn't bring myself to participate in them. I knew my mom was dying, but to talk about things like her house and belongings and insurance proceeds was just more than I could handle. It was too painful. I took advantage of every opportunity to see her and spend time with her, but I steered clear of talking about her dying. Then, on a snowy Saturday in early March, my sister called. The nurse was just here, she said, 
and she told us that mom's body is shutting down. We don't know how long she has left, but if you want to talk to her again, you'd better come. I made arrangements as quickly as I could for someone to come over and take care of my boys. And then I jumped in the car and raced from South Minneapolis to St. Cloud as fast as I could. It was probably only a 90-minute drive, but it seemed like an eternity. I remember praying harder than I had ever prayed before. Please, God, please don't let her die. Please don't let her die until I have a chance to see her one more time. I repeated the prayer over and over again while trying to remain calm at the same time. I arrived at my sister's house and ran through the door. My mom's eyes lit up when she saw me. I breathed a huge sigh of relief and offered a silent prayer of thanksgiving. I only had several hours with my mom before she drifted into unconsciousness. But in that brief time, it became apparent that I wasn't the only one who needed to say goodbye. My mom did, too. She told me that I had been a wonderful daughter and that I had been a source of joy in her life. She asked that I tell my boys stories to remember her by because they were so young. She told me that she loved me. If my mom was at all afraid to die, she didn't show it. She knew where she was going, and she knew that she would be with God. But my mom was still sad to leave everyone she loved and who loved her. And I realized later that part of her sadness stemmed from being painfully aware of the grief we would all be left with. I think the sadness my mother felt is not unlike what Jesus felt in his last hours with the disciples. The setting for our text is part of what's known as the farewell discourse of John's Gospel, five full chapters that convey Jesus' final words to his disciples where he quite literally tells them goodbye. It takes place during the last meal that Jesus and the disciples will share together. Jesus has washed the disciples' feet as an example of servanthood, has predicted that one among them will betray him, has broken the news as tenderly as possible that he will not be with them much longer, has given them a new commandment to love one another as he has loved them, and has told Peter that despite his bold declaration, I will lay down my life for you, Jesus, Peter will deny him three times. On the heels of all of this, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Because he knows their hearts are troubled. He knows they're breaking. And Jesus wants desperately to comfort them, to ease their angst and confusion and sorrow. He wants to assure them that despite the way things appear, he is not abandoning them. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus says, and I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. It's a beautiful image and a powerful promise for the disciples and for us. Yes, life on this earth as we know it will end. Death will come for each of us and for everyone we love. But we are reminded, especially in this Easter season, that because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, death does not have the last word. Life does. And we can join the Apostle Paul in proclaiming that nothing in all creation, even death itself, can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I know this to be true. 
I believe it with all the faith my heart can muster. And yet, my heart is troubled. And I've been wondering what Jesus' words might mean for us here and now in this day as we live in the midst of a global pandemic, as people struggle to make ends meet because they no longer have a job, as more people suffer from hunger and homelessness, as our kids and grandkids are separated from their teachers and classrooms and friends, as the world becomes even darker for those already suffering from loneliness and depression, as the number of deaths from COVID-19 continues to rise and we watch helplessly, as even some of our friends and loved ones fall victim to it. When it came time for me to choose an image for Grace's website that would convey the text for today, I found a number of possibilities. I was tempted to go with something that would evoke a sense of calm and comfort to reinforce Jesus' words, do not let your hearts be troubled. But in the end, I opted for an image that I think better illustrates the times we're living in. Dark and ominous clouds reaching down to meet the white caps of a stormy sea. It's hardly a reassuring image, but Jesus' words offer reassurance and hope even in the midst of chaos. In my Father's house are many dwelling places, or rooms, or mansions, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading. And here's where I think it's helpful to consider the text in its original Greek, because the Greek root used here is the same verb, meno, meaning abide that John uses again and again and again throughout his gospel. To abide in the word, to abide in Jesus, is a major theme in this gospel. And it points to the enduring nature of the relationship between Jesus and all who believe in him. Because this text is so often read at funerals and memorial services, we naturally tend to hear these words as being about life after death. But the meaning is more expansive than this. Jesus doesn't wait until we die to abide with us. He abides with us here and now in this time, in this life. And in Jesus, we are brought into an intimate relationship with the Father, the God who created us, and loves us beyond measure. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father, Jesus says. As one commentary notes, this one sentence crystallizes who Jesus is and his central place in God's mission, namely, the one who comes to make God known. In the very first chapter of John's Gospel, we read, the word became flesh and lived among us. Or, as the message puts it, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. I like that image. Jesus in the neighborhood. Sudi Nielsen Thompson writes, The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood so that human eyes that had never seen God might behold the creator of heaven and earth so that we might glimpse the fullness of God in the living, breathing, embodied form of the beloved Son. And through Jesus' words and deeds, his grace and love, we come to know the character of God. We see something of the Creator's glory when the word made flesh turns water into wine. We glimpse the Father's compassion when Christ halts the hands of the Pharisees, Pharisees, saying, Let anyone who is without sin cast the first stone. We see something of the Holy One's vulnerability when Jesus kneels before his friends to wash their feet. We glimpse the very heart of God 
when Jesus sheds tears of sorrow at the tomb of Lazarus. Most of all, we come to know the Father's deep, deep longing for relationship whenever Jesus draws others into the embrace of God and invites them and us to life abundant. Now, we may not experience God in the same way that those first disciples witnessed the divine presence in Jesus, but we do know and have seen God. We've seen God in doctors and nurses and first responders who are putting their own lives on the line as they work valiantly to save others from COVID-19 and who hold the hands of those losing the battle. We've seen God in the teacher who is taking care of her student's newborn brother as the family recovers from the virus. We've seen God in people going out of their way to offer words of encouragement and comfort and hope to those desperately in need of hearing them. We've seen God in all those working tirelessly to care for the most vulnerable among us. And I've seen God in you, the people of grace, as you have held one another in prayer and shown love to our neighbors in this community and across the world through your generous gifts. In acts of love and mercy, kindness and compassion, God is made known. A few days ago, I heard from a dear friend who is dealing with some serious health issues and concerned about others who are struggling as well. In her email, she wrote, I have never feared death as much as I fear it now, and I'm not sure where that leaves me in my faith. I so appreciated her honesty and transparency. This is a woman of deep faith. I have no doubt she is very familiar with Jesus' words in John's Gospel. But it was a reminder that knowing that we belong to God doesn't necessarily prevent us from experiencing fear, even fear that can shake us to our very core. We are vulnerable human beings, after all, just as God created us to be. I think that when our hearts are troubled, we can take comfort in remembering that Jesus knows what a troubled heart, a broken heart, feels like because he experienced it himself. When we worry that our faith isn't as strong as it should be, we can give thanks that God's love isn't based on the degree of our faith, In fact, it might help us to remember Thomas and Philip. We don't know where you're going, Jesus. How can we possibly know the way? Just show us the Father, Jesus, and we'll be satisfied. We can imagine Jesus shaking his head, wondering how after all this time, they still don't get it. But he doesn't love them any less. And we can take comfort in knowing that Jesus' presence in our lives isn't dependent on us. Jesus shows up even when we're not looking for him, and even though we often fail to recognize him. And when the warmth of God's presence seems to elude us altogether, all we can do is walk by faith, trusting that Jesus walks with us. People of God, Jesus has moved into the neighborhood for good, and we can be assured that he is here to stay because he has come from the Father to abide with us forever that we might see and know the abundant and never-ending love of God. Amen.
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love that knows no bounds. When our hearts are troubled, hold us close and give us the peace of your presence. Help us to trust in you and to remember that we are yours in life, in death, and through all eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of love, we give you thanks today for mothers and those who have shown us motherly love. Thank you for their care and nurture throughout our lives. We pray for those who long to be a mother and struggle with infertility, especially today bring peace and healing to their hearts. Comfort those of us who mourn and miss our mothers, allowing us to celebrate their memories and be held in your arms of care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for doctors, nurses, and all who care for the sick. Keep them safe and healthy. Strengthen them in body and spirit. Refresh them when they are weary. Console them when they are anxious. Encourage them when they are disheartened. And comfort them in times of grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, help us to see the face of Christ in those who are poor and in serving them to serve you. Give us generous hearts that those living in poverty would have adequate food, clothing, and shelter. Bless and protect all those who work to alleviate suffering, and by your Spirit, move us to affirm the dignity of all people and to work for just laws that protect the most vulnerable among us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. Gather your community around all who need your healing power, especially the residents and caregivers at senior living facilities, especially St. Teresa in New Hope, where many of the residents in long-term care have tested positive for COVID-19. We pray for Rose Fondell, Dorothy, Mavis Nixon, Millie Clark, and Margot Kathleen Grossman, twin nieces of Karen Olson, born prematurely. Rakai Uganda and our adopted kids there and in our mission in Haiti as they face food shortages due to rationing of FMSC food. Donnie Heitland, Lindy Richards, Shirley Christensen, Carol Potter, Joe Bailey, Julie Swedberg, Christopher Sluis, John Maleka, Kathy Lovick, and Judy Wold. Hear also the names of those we now name silently or out loud before you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, grant comfort, peace, and the hope of Christ's resurrection to all who grieve today. We, we pray especially for Dan and Barb Dormsgaard and family upon the death of Dan's mother, Violet Dormsgaard. Jody and family as they mourn the death of their infant daughter, Amelia. Hold them in your loving arms as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks for your continued support of Grace Lutheran and its ministries here. We invite you to send in your offering via mail or through our website. You can click Give Now link and it will lead you through and to a way to make an online donation. Your gifts have continued to allow us to continue our ministry and care for people in our community and throughout the world. If the God who raised Jesus from the dead is for us, who can be against us? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. 
step out into the world in humble confidence. There is nothing about to happen that God has not foreseen, and no situation where Christ will not be there ahead of you, preparing a place and an opportunity for you. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, God's Son, and the blessing of God, all-loving Creator, Redeemer, and Counselor, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.